how successful people deal with setbacks. We all have setbacks, right? We're going along, everything seems to be going fine, and then poof, something happens and it throws us off track. What do you do? Well, today I'm going to go over some of the most common setbacks and the way that the most successful people deal with them so that instead of being a setback, they're a challenge that they can grow through. Before I get to the goods, I'd like you to check and see, are you a subscriber of this channel yet? If not, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll get notifications inside YouTube when we drop a video that can help you live a happier and more successful life. Also, go ahead right now, give us a thumbs up on this video so that we know that you're here and that you like it. Now, what I want you to do in the comment section is let me know where you're from and make sure that you're using that to ask any questions that you have along the way. And I promise I'll come back in and I will answer every single one. If you want to know what the most successful people do to overcome setbacks, stick around because it's coming right up. Guild coaching, more success, less stress. The more successful you become, the more pressure and the more duties and obligations you're going to have. It just makes sense. The higher you are on the food chain, the more you have to think about and take care of. And that means that one of the biggest setbacks that super successful people face is that they have too many competing priorities. A very easy way to say this is that they have overwhelm. If you've ever experienced overwhelm, I want you to open the comment section right now and say, yes, I have experienced overwhelm. I know what you're talking about, Dr. Jane. I hear you. I think all of us have experienced overwhelm from time to time. But what separates the people who are not as successful from the super successful is that the super successful have four questions that they ask themselves to help get themselves out of that overwhelm and help them set their priorities in the order that they need to come in order to be their best self and achieve what they need to achieve. Now, I'm just gonna give you a key word for each one of the questions while I explain. We can all feel like we're going in different directions, but when you do have too many priorities, pay attention to these four things. The first question is about alignment. Which tasks most closely align with my goals? So that's the first one. So if you're taking notes, I'm always asking you to take notes, write down the word alignment or type it into the chat. Allow the comment section to be your notepad. The second question that you need to ask yourself is, which ones have the greatest consequences if you don't accomplish them? So which of the tasks that are on your task list have the biggest chance of negative impact if they don't get done. You can order these. You can actually put them in order to help you understand as far as a timeline goes, which one should be considered highest priority. This next question is really hard, especially for me, because I set really high expectations for myself. I'm a red personality color. If you don't know what the personality colors mean, go to the video description. We have a link to our free personality test. You can go down there, take that test, and find out what colors you are and what it means. But as a red, <laughs> this one is very, very important to me. I need to know if my expectations for each priority are actually realistic, are my expectations reasonable? Is there any flexibility there that I'm not acknowledging? Have I set a goal for myself with an unattainable timeline? I really have to take a good look in the mirror and sometimes that's not so easy because we don't like to see that we're being too hard on ourselves. And a lot of times, especially if you're a high achiever, you are being too hard on yourself. So that's question number three. And question number four is about quality. So many people work and work and work and they focus on making things perfect. So you have to ask yourself, does everything have to be done perfectly? Spoiler alert, no, everything doesn't have to be done perfectly. I'm not saying do just the bare minimum. I love going above and beyond. Ask any of our clients with Guild. We always strive to go above and beyond, but inflexibility is your biggest enemy when it comes to success. A flexible mind is a mind with a lot of emotional intelligence and people who are super successful have flexibility.
flexible mind. So make sure that you're being flexible. You're not setting expectations for yourself that are too tight, putting too much pressure on you because it's not fun to move and we're not at our most productive when we're under high pressure. Some people would say, I do produce more when I'm under pressure. You might produce more, but what you're producing is a lower quality than you could if you set realistic expectations and you weren't holding yourself to perfectionist standards. Another setback that a lot of us face is that other people don't meet our expectations. You know what you want to accomplish. You know how you want to do it. You also know that achieving those results could require collaboration from others. Determined people, we always find a way to get our needs met, but super successful people recognize that they can support and influence other people and not control them. Evaluating your expectations and then communicating them clearly to your team can help you gauge performance. That way you can have conversations with people instead of just building up frustration that you're not getting what you want and they don't understand what they're supposed to be doing or that they're incapable of doing what they're supposed to be doing. It helps you to provide training for them or to figure out other directions to go in. If your team isn't living up to expectations, whether your team is in an office or it's your family, it helps you to back up and learn each person's skill sets, what they can bring to the table, where they need to grow, where you need to grow, and it helps you all to develop the plan together. Now there has to be a leader, and if you're watching this, the leader is probably you. There has to be a leader. I'm not saying, you know, lead by committee. You do need that one person who has the final say, but it's so much more effective to lead from a place of power, which is communication, openness and training for moving forward than it is by force. Force is very, very weak. And so you never want to lead from that type of a standpoint. So when other people aren't living up to your expectations, look for the place where you can guide and lead with true power, which stands in confidence and communication. And that is a key of super successful people. Another setback is that sometimes your personal life is interrupting your train of thought, your sleep habits, your, you know, all of that, and it can impact your work life. So whether your work life is impacting your personal life or vice versa, it all comes back to personal accountability. Are you one of those people who's really dedicated and you're focused and you're an overachiever at work? Sometimes your dedication there can take away from your personal life. I have conversations all the time with people who come to me wanting to know more about our personal effectiveness programs like the environmental redesign system, freedom by design. You can learn more about those if you look in the video description here, but they come wanting solutions because they're happy at work. They love their boss. They're achieving what they want to achieve, but then they're not having the time, the space, the opportunity to really enjoy it in a personal life. And they need to develop that balance. Developing time management techniques, understanding boundaries and sticking to them, having a coach or a mentor, they can all help in this area and it can help you build up that side of your personal life. Give me a yes in the comments if you have ever felt like you were working, working, working and working just to work because you never had time to enjoy the results of your work or that you're working and not earning enough and so there's not enough there left to provide for you to enjoy. If either one of those applies to you, then this is something that you desperately need. So I invite you to please check that out in the video description. Another thing that I'd like to remind you to do, if you're not already a subscriber of this channel, please hit the subscribe button. So we know that you love us hit the little bell so that when you log into YouTube, it'll say, Hey, there's a new video here for you and make sure that you give us a like on this video so that we know that you're enjoying this content. Also, please feel free to ask any questions that you want down there in the comments. And I personally will come in and answer them. Make sure that you are following us so that you know the next time we drop a video to help you live a life with more happiness, lower stress, and more success. I'm Dr. Jane. See you later.